Hello and welcome to Dr. Bond Science Theater. Today we're going to be talking about water chemistry. Water is the universal solvent. It's essential for life. We know nothing that's living, even aliens, because I've met them all, that doesn't depend on water for their cells. Our bodies are made up of about two-thirds water. So you have water inside of your cells, which is called the intracellular fluid. You have water that is surrounding the cells, which is the interstitial fluid, blood plasma, and CSF, etc. So you have a various water compartments in the body. So the first thing we need to talk about is polarity and electronegativity. How much does an atom want electrons? And some of them don't like to share very well. Let me give you a real human example. Say that you and your friends are fighting over a pair of shoes. You all want the shoes, but one of you is the strongest because you work out a lot. You lift, bro. And so you're holding on to these shoes the tightest. That means that you want them the most. And of course you're stronger. So that means that you have the highest electronegativity value. If we're talking about humans and shoes, but we're not. Let's talk about oxygen. Oxygen, as far as one of the living elements that we care about, chon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Oxygen is going to have the highest electronegativity value at about 3.5, and that means it has the highest desire for those electrons, so it's going to hold the electrons closer to itself than whoever it's bonded with. Totally not fair. So when oxygen and hydrogen are in a covalent bond together, remember covalent bond means sharing, or at least they're supposed to be sharing, and oxygen has the higher electronegativity value, that means that the oxygen is pulling those electrons closer to its nucleus. It's totally greedy, I know. But by doing this, what does that do? What charges an electron? It's negative. So here we have an oxygen pulling those electrons towards its nucleus, and that's going to make it slightly more negative than the hydrogen it's supposed to be sharing with, which is going to leave the hydrogen a little bit positive. It's not like an ionic bond. Remember, ionic bonds are an electron transfer. So let's get to water. We have an oxygen bound to two hydrogens. I like to think of it as a Mickey Mouse, with the hydrogens being the Mickey Mouse ears and the oxygen being the Mickey Mouse face. Whatever helps you. There's an unequal sharing of electrons, so there's going to be a partial difference in charges. Who is more negative? One with a higher electronegativity value, and that would be oxygen. And it does share. It just doesn't share equally. So that's why we're going to say this is a polar molecule. It has poles. Think north-south pole. Negative, positive pole. But it's partial. It's only a partial. We have a bend in both of the covalent bonds between oxygen and hydrogen. These bends are at an angle of 104.3 degrees. Paula Abdul said it best back in the 90s. Opposites attract. She was right. Paula Abdul was a budding biochemist and nobody even knew it. The hydrogens, the partially positive hydrogens, are going to be slightly attracted to the partially negative oxygen. And so this is how water molecules travel about with all their billion friends in, in whatever, a beaker of solution. The bond that we're going to talk about, but it's slightly weaker, not slightly, it's a lot weaker, it's called a hydrogen bond. And that is going to be between water molecules. The partially positive hydrogens of one molecule are going to be slightly attracted to the slightly negative or the partially negative charges of the adjacent oxygen on another water molecule. And we call that a hydrogen bond. This is a relatively weak bond. That way we can dissolve things. When we dissolve things, we're going to break the hydrogen bonds, remake them, and, and it's just ongoing. So we want them weak. We don't want them strong. For example, in your DNA between the two strands, when we unzip them and we zip them back, do we want those bonds to be strong or weak? I don't know, I'm not sure it's so much pressure. Weak? Weak, because we want that helicase to unzip them really fast and then be able to come back. So we have other applications for hydrogen bonds in the body. So just remember the hydrogen bonds are going to be weak, whereas the covalent are the strongest, and then we have the ionic bonds, and then when the hydrogen bonds, and then we have other bonds we'll talk about. talk about water and oil. Do you think they like each other? 
Have you ever had Italian salad dressing or tried to make it? If you put the water and the oil together and you shake it up, they're going to make two different layers. It's because water has all of these hydrogen bonds and oil doesn't really have any hydrogen bonds. So because of this, those that like hydrogen bonds stick with each other and the oil who doesn't have hydrogen bonds doesn't like those that do. It's kind of like high school in a way. It's kind of like the rockers versus the preppy people. The preppy people being water, they have all the hydrogen bonds, they have all the polo shirts, whatever. And then the rockers who don't really like the polo shirts, they're like, oh my God, let's just go over here. Let's stay away from them. It's kind of like that. Two terms we need to know. Hydrophilic means that we love water. Hydro, Phil, think Dr. Phil always wants everyone to love each other. Can never get this wrong. Look at the fish, they love each other. They're fishing because they like each other. They're hydrophilic. Things that dissolve in water, those are gonna be hydrophilic things. Things that don't dissolve in water, like oil, that is gonna be hydrophobic. If you have a phobia, that means you're scared, right? So scary water, hydrophobic, here. Oh my God, there's a shark, there's a shark. I'm scared, I'm scared of the water. Because there's a shark, it's hydrophobic, whatever, okay. Also another term is amphipathic. If a molecule has both a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end, that means like if you're in high school and you're preppy, but you like the heavy metal music, you'd be amphipathic. Let's look at an example fatty acid. This is an amphipathic molecule. It has a hydrophilic, what we're gonna consider to be a head, and a long hydrocarbon chain, which is the hydrophobic tail. We can also just draw a ball, which is the hydrophilic head, and then the long tail. That is the hydrophobic chain. They're sharing equally. It's all covalently bonded. There's no partially negative or positive charges. We're just gonna say it's just all um, nonpolar. And you see on this hydrophilic head that we do have a charge. And so things that are charged are going to like to interact with water because water has a partial charge. An example would be the phospholipids that make up our cell membranes. The hydrophilic wants to be around other hydrophilic compounds, such as water. Water is hydrophilic. Obviously, it loves itself, because if it didn't love itself, it wouldn't be able to love anyone else. Then we have on this molecule, because it's amphipathic, it has a hydrocarbon tail, which is hydrophobic. So the hydrophobic is going to want to stay around other hydrophobics, and the hydrophilic is going to be around other hydrophilics. So this is going to be basis for what we call a micelle that is used in soaps and detergents and all of the hydrophilic heads are on the outside and then the hydrophobic tails are going to be the inside layer. Now in the case of a cellular membrane we're going to have a double membrane, we'll talk about that later. But right now let's look at a micelle and this is going to be the basis for soaps and detergents and how they work is you put them on your hands when you have dirt and grease and you're going to rub them and what you're doing is you're encouraging the grease on your hands to get in the middle of these micelles where the hydrophobic little chamber is on the inside. Because remember, hydrophobic likes hydrophobic. So it's gonna travel to the middle of this micelle. Then the hydrophilic heads, which is in the surrounding water, which is essentially solubilized in the water, is gonna carry it away down the drain. So it takes the insoluble grease from your hands and down the drain. So that's a micelle. It's a little ball of amphipathic molecules. <laughs> Let's talk about hydrogen ion concentration. In a biological system, it is extremely important to maintain a constant balance of a hydrogen ion concentration. Whenever you have the brackets, and that means concentration of, capital H would be the symbol for hydrogen. You put a plus because it's an ion. So we have hydrogen ion concentration. Now, if we're going to be talking about pH, that's going to be the negative log. Whenever you have the lowercase p, that means negative log. Negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration in water. When we have an equal concentration of hydrogen ions, which is positive, they're cations, and hydroxide ions, which are negative, that's OH negative, when they're equal, then that means that we have a neutral solution. If the hydrogen ion concentration exceeds the hydroxide ion concentration, then that is going to make the solution acidic, meaning that we have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. If the hydroxide ions are larger in concentration than the hydrogen ion concentration, then the solution is going to be basic. 
when we're talking about how acidic something is or how basic something is, let's look at the scale. It goes from 1 to 14. Actually, it goes beyond that. But in biological systems, we don't discuss it farther than this. So between 1 and 14, then we have 7 that's neutral. Anything below a 7, between 1 and 7, or 0 and 7, will be acidic. Anything between 7, above 7, and 14 is going to be basic. The closer you get to 14, the more basic it is, or alkaline. And the closer you get to 1, or 0, the more acidic it is. A pH of 0 is going to have the highest hydrogen ion concentration on this scale. And then a pH of 14 is going to have the lowest. So it's going to be an inverse relationship. The pH scale is a math manipulated scale via a base 10 logarithm. Therefore, a pH of 1 contains 10 times more hydrogen than a pH of 2. A pH of 1 contains 100 times more hydrogen than a pH of 3, and so on. Acidic solutions tend to taste very sour. If you've ever tasted lemon juice or vinegar, ew. Then basic solutions like tonic water, even if you mix it with alcohol, it's still going to be bitter. It's nasty. So those are going to be the difference in how it tastes, but some acids and some bases don't taste. Now let's talk about a property of water. It has auto-ionization. Auto means self, and ionization means that it becomes ionized. It becomes an ion, a charged particle. So water, which is H2O, if it loses a hydrogen, then what happens? We have a hydrogen, which is an ion now because it's positively charged. And then we have a hydroxide ion, which is an anion, it's negative. So let's look at the equation. Here we have water. We have two different arrows going both directions. That means that it's at an equilibrium. So this is constant. It is constantly auto-ionizing itself. That brings us to our first constant. Capital K is our equilibrium constant. Okay, with water, we're going to call it K sub W, W for water, at 25 degrees Celsius. We always have to account for temperature when we're talking physiological systems. Now, if we're talking about the human body, obviously, the temperature is not going to be 25 degrees Celsius unless you're dead sitting in a 25 degrees Celsius house. That wouldn't be physiology, would it? It would be deadology. When we're talking about physiology, which in biochemistry, that's the chemistry of life, so married to physiology, we're going to be talking about a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Water auto-ionizes, but at a very low amount. Actually, the hydrogen ion concentration in pure water at 25 degrees Celsius is 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and that is equal to the hydroxide concentration. So the molar concentration of water is 55 moles. Then remember, it's the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide concentration divided by the molar amount of water, 55.5. And that's going to give us Kw, which is the equilibrium constant or the product constant for water. Empirically, we can determine that the concentration of hydrogen ions in water is 10 to the negative 7. And so if they're equal, then the Kw constant is going to be 10 to the negative 14. The hydrogen ion concentration is going to be at a pH of 7 once we take the negative log. And why do we take the negative log? Because if you take the log of 10 to the negative 7, then it's going to be a negative number. And in science, we don't like to be negative. We're all positive people. And we like our math to be positive. This is Brenda, the not-so-good witch, signing off for today. See you next time on Dr. Bond Science Theater.